Sorry, I wanted to start off with the best one first because <laughs> I just freaking love this one. It's so good. What's up guys? So I am super pumped because last week I got to work on an amazing music video project with a pretty, pretty large artist and I can't give you too many details, but here is some clips and maybe you can kind of hear the song. No, I'm just kidding. I actually can't announce anything yet, but as soon as I do, I will definitely let you know. It's super exciting. But today we are going to go over three Photoshop tricks, actually maybe four, actually I forget how many there are, but ones that I use that make editing in Photoshop that much faster. And they're quick little tips that I found that not many people know about. So let's jump right in and get started with the video. Will Simpson here and welcome back to Exploring Photography. It's great to see you guys. If you are new here, we talk all things photography from editing to taking pictures, all of that stuff. So go ahead and I know it's early, but, and I haven't earned your trust or earned your subscribe yet, but if you want, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the little bell notifies you for videos that I do every Monday at 7 p.m. But today we're talking about Photoshop tips and tricks. So here we are in Photoshop and let's just dive right into the first one. Now the first one is something that I've found that not many people know about and it's a little trick that is amazing, oh my God, for reconstructing, for rebuilding, it's just incredible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the layer, the layer here, press Command or Control J. I am using a MacBook Pro, the Photoshop version, I'm using 23.2.1. Okay, now that we got that all the way, uh, I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard, swat, click and swipe right, we'll zoom in. Uh, right to about there. Now this is the stamp tool, the clone stamp tool. Press S on the keyboard. This will give you your clone stamp tool. Now, if you press option, uh, alter option, that'll give you the target. So we're gonna clone stamp right here. You'll notice that I now have a copy of this peer. So if I click and drag, I can make a copy really simple. But let's say you're reconstructing something and you need to tilt a little bit. You need to change it. If you push and hold, shift and alter option, and then using the comma or the period on your keyboard, the, the arrows, the left and right arrows on a Mac, you can tilt it. So I'm pushing and holding the comma and I'm tilting it counterclockwise. If I then push and hold the period, again with shift, alt and option press, I can rotate it clockwise. This is incredible. This is such an amazing technique because you can reconstruct things. So if I tilt this all the way over and then I paint, now I have it nice and tilted. So if I'm reconstructing a rock or something, I can then make that curve using something that exists in the photo and it makes it so much easier. Oh, this, this is like, this is mind blowing editing guys. This is amazing. So the other option you can do, let's take another sample and let's do shift plus alt and option, and then the brackets. This makes it smaller. The left bracket makes it smaller or the right bracket makes it bigger. So this allows you to clone stamp and get exactly the size and the angle that you want. It's just, it's incredible. Now, let's say you don't have these hotkeys and or you're not sure, you don't remember these hotkeys. Simply go over here to the right panel and you'll see a clone source. If you don't see that, go up into window, make sure clone source is selected and it should pop up no problem. You can adjust these. This is your angle. So this is your tilt, left and right. And then this is your size. Make it bigger, make it smaller in width. And you can adjust it exactly how you want just by these clicks. And then to reset, you just click the reset button and it resets all of them back to normal. That is tip number one. Oh my God, this one, sorry, I wanted to start off with the best one first because <laughs> <laughs> I just freaking love this one. It's so good. Okay, good. Next, I want to thank my Patreon members who support me and this channel. For a small monthly fee, they get a lot of benefits. Plus, there is a coaching call tier where I do a monthly coaching call where I go over your images, Q&As. It's like having a personal uh, mentor for you guys every single month. So if you're interested, there are only a few spots remaining. I'll put a link in the description and you can sign up for that right away. Uh, now, just as a quick note, Apparently these hotkeys I found are only available on the North American keyboards. So if they're not working for you, use that second way because it is in a, you can do it, but the hotkeys, the keyboard shortcuts might not work for you. But I just wanted to make a note because a lot of people are gonna comment, be like, oh, these shortcuts don't work for me. Well, 
this is why. But you do have the clone source here where you can adjust all of those things as needed. All right, the next one that I wanna show you is a quick little trick uh, using the lasso tool. Let's say I zoom in here, press Z on the keyboard, zoom in and then move around here. Uh, I wanna select this. Now there's a way, there's several ways you can do it. Let's say we do the quick select tool and we just select the peer. Now, great, so now we have the peer selected, but let's say we don't want these little sections. So how do you take that, take that away? So let's click the lasso tool. And if we press option on the keyboard, you'll notice that a little minus sign appears on the lasso. So now we can just simply do this and draw that and take away that selection. But let's say it's a square like that. So use the marquee tool, the marquee selecting, which is M on the keyboard and use the rectangle. There's also circle and other options there. Let's use the rectangle, press and hold option. Now you have a little minus sign and we can just do this and boom. We have now deselected that part. Let's do this one. And keeping the same selection, we are taking away that other selection. Now, let's say you want to add something. Well, you can do the same thing with any of the selection tools. Let's click the lasso tool, press shift. Now you have a plus sign and we want to add this section here. So we just go around that, let go. We added that. And let's say we want to minus something. So we want to minus this one here, but we don't want to use the perfect square. We just use the lasso tool with the minus sign, pressing and holding option or alt. Boom. So quick select tools, uh, any select tools, if you press and hold the alt or option button, you can subtract selection. If you press and hold shift, you can add selection without messing up your original selection. So that's a tool that I use all the time and makes for way easier editing. It's a really, really good shortcut to remember. And the next tip is selective color. So you know that if you press the eyedropper tool, which is I on the keyboard, and you wanna select color, if you notice here, my foreground color is black. So let's say I wanna select, um, let's say I wanna select some of this orange or this pink or something. So I press the eyedropper tool and I select orange. Now I have this pink color and if I paint it using the brush tool, I can paint that color. But let's say the color you want is not in Photoshop. Let's say it's in a completely different screen or on a different area of the screen, or a different image or something like that. So I have this other image here. So what we're gonna do is with the eyedropper tool, click and hold. So I click and hold and then slide the eyedropper over here. Now you'll notice that my color is changing in the bo bottom there, it's changed. Now if I go off the screen, say to the desktop, which I have just the default purple color. If I go off here, now you have purple, goes to the, the little pink, to the magenta, and I'm getting these different colors. Again, I haven't released the mouse yet. So if I come back, now I get these other colors. So that is the way that you can easily get any color from any screen. You just have to drag it over, click and drag it over to that color. So that is a super simple way to get any color that you want. And finally is a great way when you're retouching photos or skin or anything like that or working on close up details. A lot of times when I'm editing a photo, I will zoom in and out and see how it is. I'll continually zoom in and out to see what effect I'm doing because I'm zoomed in and then I wanna see how it looks far away. And then I wanna zoom back in, I wanna see so on and so forth. So a, a quicker way to do this is to work on two screens, to go up into window, arrange, and we're gonna click new window four and then it's gonna say the file name, whatever's open. In this case, this file name is online upload because this is the one that I use as examples. So click that and you'll notice that now I have two panels. Each of these panels are the exact same file in two windows. So if I edit one, the other one gets edited. So now what we need to do is go into window, arrange, and then we're going to align these two windows, vertical, horizontal, however you want. In this case, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna go two up vertical. So now I have two window panes. I have one here and one here, but again, they're the same image. So when I affect one, the other one is affected. Now, if you have two monitors, you can then take this one and drag it to the other monitor and have two full screen, which is really convenient. So let's say I press Z on the keyboard and zoom in here and move over here. Now let's say I wanna remove these posts. If I press J for the spot healing tool and I just move it. If you look on the right, that post is now gone. Before, after, removes the post. Then I come over here and I remove the post. This allows you to see what effects you're doing. So in this case, notice I removed the post, but now there's this little brown spot here that you can see. 
Well, we know that that's not gonna look good far away, so we need to do a little bit more touch up. This is why it looks really, really good on skin because you can in real time see the effect that is being created. So this is an awesome tool. Now, if you also press and hold the space bar on the keyboard, you can move around. But if you press and hold shift and the space bar, you can then move both screens as you go. So you can really stay and keep track of where you're editing. And those are my four awesome tips and tricks that I use in almost ed every editing session that I know will speed up your workflow. So I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go ahead and hit that like button and I'll put in some uh, cool little freebie links in the description for you, like some presets and some sharpening actions and things like that for Photoshop, as well as my Patreon link and all of the goodies if you wanna help support the channel. And you guys should probably go check out this video here because honestly, if you want really sharp photos, this is the video to watch. All right guys, see you next Monday.